ways to cook and, and not make cooking so scary sometimes. Hi, so thank you very much. Um, so nutritional stress, I, I think to kind of better understand that as a statement, um, we probably need to look at like exactly what nutrition means. So the very definition of nutrition is to eat, to consume food that benefits us. Um, that it, you know, helps with us with our growth, repair of our bodies and maintenance. So that's the first thing I always look at when, when we're looking at you know, the term nutritional stress. It's really easy to kind of get thrown off that um, with you know, ingesting food that's maybe fast food, um, trying to eat on the go, forgetting that you know, you've got a lunch meeting or whatever else it may be. Um, and I think all too often, unfortunately, that kind of gets in the way, like life just generally gets in the way. So I don't know how many of you out there are parents. Um, I am, I have three little ones at home. And one of the big stresses in my life is trying to get those you know, little ones fed, watered, all the rest of it at the end of the evening. And also um, sort of getting in all their activities that they're going through. So my children all do gymnastics. So we're you know, on the way to gymnastics and you know, we're not gonna have dinner until late. So we stop at a drive through right? And get something really, really quick. And I think every one of us can relate to that. Um, but that right there, that one step right there is such a big factor into how nutritional stress comes about because all of a sudden it's not just once a week or every so often it becomes more and more. And, and pretty soon we're actually shifting how we're eating um, to sort of like this fast food, you know, quick, easy access food. So um, I wanted today to talk a little bit about like how I combat that as a chef. So I'm obviously do this for a living. I've been doing it a really long time. I've been cooking for 20 years now. Um, and when I first started cooking, and even now, I think to, the, to this day, to me, food is like it's, it needs to be eaten in its entirety, if that makes sense. Um, so I cook from scratch every single day at home with my children, my husband, and my children also help us do that. And I think that's one of the biggest parts for me and takeaways is if you've ever looked at um, a label on the back of a can of diced tomatoes, the first three ingredients are normally the highest ingredients in that item. But what you actually find after that is that you've got about four, five or six different ingredients listed under there that aren't necessary whatsoever to be in that can. It's just there for stabilization. So I'm not saying to you today that we need to kind of like go away from that completely because it definitely exists. But I'm saying that there's choices that we can make when we're cooking at home um, that are gonna basically set us up for success. So one of the first ones I wanna talk about is um, preparation. The big thing for me on a Sunday is I spend the majority of the afternoon prepping food. And it sounds really boring, right? <laughs> I'm sure for a lot of people it is. For me, it's, it's kind of essential. So I plan out every week my menu for, the, for home and I do the shopping, do the click list because I hate going to the store. Um, so I plan out my menu and I basically sit there and I'm like, all right, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to do dishes that are all going to need minced garlic in them and they're all gonna need onion in them. So what I do is I take all of the onions and garlic I bought for the week and I just go ahead and mince all of that up and I put it into containers and it's in the refrigerator ready to go for the rest of my meal. Another one that I do, and I love this, this is such an easy takeaway. We're a family of five. So I try and kind of like cost control all of our meals out a little bit. Um, and obviously that's the chef for me, but I, I do a chicken or two chickens every week. So I roast a chicken. And I then I take that chicken and I tear it down and I break it into, you know, the breast meat, the dark meat, all that kind of thing. And then I take the bones of that chicken and I roast those bones in the oven, take them out. I use all of my um, celery, stems, stalks, all the onions that you just prepared earlier, all the carrot trimmings. And I put that into a stock pot and then I simmer it for about two hours. Then you've got this beautiful hearty healthy bone broth so from that chicken I've made perhaps this particular week chicken noodle soup with my my chicken my bone broth I've made chicken salad um, to take with me to work to have a quick sandwich I've made a chicken curry so out of a chicken I've managed to get three different meals and I think actually when I costed this out last time it was something like 
a dollar fourteen per person, I want to say, per meal, which is I mean it's pretty good, right? And then you're getting three different meals out of it. So um, that's one of the things that I do at home to kind of like help me align the week. And I think honestly, that's probably the biggest the biggest thing you can do to try and get better at eating at home. I don't know how many of you uh, reach for, I'm terrible at this. Like I'll reach for something just to get me through the day, like a Snickers bar or something like that. But if I'd actually taken the time to prepare and think about it, yada, 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 then, you know, I would have been gone with my chicken noodle soup and we would have been much happier about it. Another thing I wanted to talk about um, is what's actually in food. I said a little bit earlier about diced tomatoes. I was diagnosed about five years ago with celiac disease, which is uh, your body basically attacks itself when you eat gluten. So it's the real deal. It's not the fad, all the rest of it. Um, I get really, really sick when I eat gluten. So when I was diagnosed about it, it then became really important to me to start looking at food labels. And what a lot of us don't realize is that in order to have a stabilized bottle of salad dressing or maybe mayonnaise, whatever it may be, you are adding all the, we add so many different items into that product that just aren't necessary. And if you can't pronounce it, you probably shouldn't be eating it. <laughs> so um, I have to look at everything, everything that I eat. And it really got me started to think about like just food in general, like how could I, how could I do it better? So I do this during the summer, my kids love doing it. Um, I make home marinara from scratch. So I grow my tomatoes in my garden and I know that's not everybody can do it and not everybody's interested in it, but I do it, I enjoy it. So I grow the tomatoes in the garden. I'm not very good at it. Um, but what I do get from the tomatoes at the end of the, the summer, I um, dice them all up and I process them um, just like you would a normal marinara from scratch. And then I can it and I've got marinara, you know, throughout probably till about December. Another good one that you can do is go to your local uh, farmer's market and ask for seconds or ugly um, fruits. They're normally the ones that don't make it into the store because they don't look very pretty, um, but they're still yummy and nutritious and all the rest of it. And they're really, really cheap because they're not making it into the store. So I cook a lot with the seasons and I just enjoy doing that. But with those tomatoes you know, and all those herbs and everything else, you can you can make so many different products at home. Um, another nice one I do in, the, in September is that we all go apple picking and we pick the apples, bring them home. You know, I'll make whatever the kids want. I'll make apple sauce. I'll make apple butter. So we just like throughout the summer, throughout the year, we're just doing all these different little sustainable things and um, bring the children into it. I find is a really, really big help because I think a lot of the time when you're trying to cook, you're trying to do it quickly and da 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 da, and it's like, you know, you just, you just got so much going on and you're stressing out about different stuff. If you bring it into the family and make it part of the family, then it becomes easier. And it's also that family time that maybe you're not connecting so much with. So my little boy, he's eight years old. His name's Jack. Absolutely loves food. Um, I think he may be a chef, I'm hoping not, but he may. And he gets really, really into it. And he will sit with me, he'll make marinara with me. I mean, eight years old, he's making marinara. You know, obviously there's a parental control thing with like stove tops and that kind of stuff, and doing it safely. But um, I just, I don't know, I think that's really cool to be able to get children into the cooking. I, um, I think we're gonna end up with a generation if we don't do things like this that aren't gonna be able to cook whatsoever. I know some we already are, some of my employees here at the hospital, you just can't even make ramen. So <laughs> um, I think it's definitely something that we need to concentrate on. So reading food labels, realizing maybe I can do it easier at home or from better at home. I guarantee you that marinara that you make is gonna be so much better than anything you can buy in the store. Um, so reading your labels, my celiac disease struggles. So I, when I was younger, I always felt really unwell whenever I would um, eat like fried foods. And I just figured that it was just something that didn't agree with me. And as I got older, it got a little bit more intense. Then I sort of became healthier, I guess. I you know, started exercising more, just more aware of my body um, and looking after it. And eventually I got diagnosed with this, which was a trigger from my pregnancy. And that's how I actually got diagnosed with celiacs. But looking back on everything that I've eaten it's all to do with the gluten like that's how I was feeling unwell my stomach was constantly bloated 
um, I just didn't look well, you know, I looked tired all the time and I was, I was exhausted. Um, so too many of those like massively refined foods, it doesn't matter if you're gluten intolerant, if you've got celiacs, if you haven't got any of those issues, just too many of those foods are really, really gonna have a detrimental effect on, on your health. Ways to recognize it is you've got an increased blood pressure, maybe your skin's not looking too good, maybe getting some breakouts, um, bloating, which was a big one for me, upset stomach, just you know, generally feeling unwell. Um, one of the things I always remember from seeing a doctor who was more of a, I guess, a naturalist doctor, when I went in there, she said, start eating brown, steer away from anything white. So no white bread, no white, um, rice, anything that you eat needs to be brown, brown bread, brown rice, all the rest of it. And the reason for that is how you break down the, the body, how the body breaks it down. So you're going to have sustainable energy longer. But what you're also doing is that you're taking out the fact that your body has to break down this old, like massively refined product. So um, I did that. I did that for about three months and I went back in to see her and I walked in and she said, oh my God, you did it. I was like, how did you know? She said, you look, just, you look amazing. You look so different. And I felt so different. I felt really, really clean. Um, and just, I don't know, more, more energy and not so sort of foggy. I don't know if anybody gets that feeling. I know Melina and I talked a lot about this when we first connected on this. Um, Melina, what was the name of the gentleman that you shared with me? Oh, oh someone who I uh, became really interested in. His name is Brendan brazier and i'll put it in the comments in the chat um he uh is an iron man triathlete and obviously not all of us are going to be iron men triathletes um uh but he wrote a book called thrive um and he basically from a an athlete's perspective he was training just as hard as everyone else he was doing harder workouts but he wasn't seeing like himself getting better so he looked at What's something that nobody else is doing that I could do? And it was really getting um, in touch with nutrition and not just nutrition in the sense of, of, I need this amount of protein so I can build this muscle or these carbs so I can go run 30 miles. It was what foods can I eat that'll help me recover faster so I can return to the next workout or the next training session or whatever. And what he found was that reducing the amount of stress that you're putting on your body from food or what you're putting in your body, he could recover faster. And then he found out that certain foods will help you recover faster or are naturally anti-inflammatory and things like that. So he, um, yeah, he's awesome. He has a book in there too. And, and when we, when chef and I were talking about this, it was, you know, a lot of times, you know, what she's saying about celiac is like, how, uh, how for how long, right. Did you, brush off the fact that like, oh, I just don't feel good. And you brush it off as that's normal. Like that's not normal. Like we're not supposed to feel like poop, like after we eat, like we will poop after we eat, but we're not supposed to feel like it. And yeah, so Brendan, I'll put his link in there for his book too. Yeah, so I, actually, I after we spoke about it, I um, followed up on that and started reading some literature about him. And it's actually really, really interesting, his um, outlook on, on you know working out and how to recover from it and none of it is unreachable honestly like it's all it's 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 all really really easy to do but it is going to require some effort to do it um and Malin, you're absolutely right like why would you feel crappy every single day you know and I, I it creeps up on you it's nothing that just happens you don't go out and have mcdonald's and you just stop feeling bad or maybe you do i don't know for me it would be horrific but um it creeps up it's over time and I think, I think that's one of the things that we need to really, really look at is like, how can I, how can I adjust my lifestyle to start feeling a little bit better, to start maybe trimming off a few of those pounds, you know? Um, so there's some, definitely some really good things that you can eat. I will go over again what I said about prepping in a little bit, but things, omega-3s are really, really good for you, found naturally in things like salmon, nuts, flaxseed, um, as I said earlier, we we're talking about eating less refined food. So brown bread instead of white bread had to go through such a process to get there, to get to that white, you know, look. Um, so really sort of just going back to basics on your food 
uh, I said about the prepping, the mise en place is what we call it. Um, mise en place is key. And I know a lot of people just don't really enjoy cooking or are intimidated maybe by cooking. I think my husband, I think it's just an excuse, but he says that he's intimidated by me in the kitchen. That's why he doesn't cook. Um, but my thing, I always kind of with, with cooking because I'm self-taught, I didn't go to culinary school. I did do an apprenticeship in England. But my thing with cooking has always been, if it scared me, I'm just gonna try it anyway. And what can go wrong, right? Chances are it could be pretty good or you know, it might be bad and you might just figure out how to refine that later. But I urge anybody to, I can't even, I can't begin to like to describe the benefits of prepping food. Like you're gonna save so much money. You're gonna start feeling so much better. You're gonna start shedding some pounds because you're not eating out all the time. You can eat your entire calorie content for one entire day in a restaurant meal because there's so many hidden calories that you just don't know about and so many things that are in the food to last longer. Places like Chipotle, um, Panera, all of that food is pre-manufactured somewhere else and just brought in in a vacuum sealed pack, you know? Like how good can that actually be for you? <laughs> just, I find it worrisome. Um, so I wanted to talk about that. And then I also wanted to talk about other things you can do. Vegetables are your superhero. To eat vegetables, like they fill you up. They're great for you. They're full of so many different vitamins and minerals that your body just naturally needs. I don't think you could eat enough of them. I don't think it's possible. It, um, vegetables help your immune system. So they help keep you healthy. And you know, we obviously need that in times like this. Uh, they're just all around great for you. One thing I do look at when I'm making vegetables is that I try and steam vegetables or I like sauteing vegetables, um, but I don't want to overcook it. I want to do it so it's still crisp. And the reason for that is that the longer you boil a vegetable, I'm sure everybody remembers maybe the gray green beans from school dinners. Um, the longer you boil a vegetable, <laughs> The worse it's going to be for you it's I mean it's still not going to be terrible right because it's a vegetable but you're going to be losing all those minerals and vitamins and that kind of thing so I steam or I saute mine sometimes I roast them just to bring out a different flavor profile um caffeine that's another one I think we're all probably guilty of I've managed just to completely switch to tea now which obviously I'm a tea drinker being British but um coffee tea any of those things on a massive like level that you're drinking three or four cups a day, it's, it's gonna be hard on your body. Um, not to be <laughs> gross, but I think we can all probably tell the difference if we've had too much coffee in our bowel movements. Um, you know, if your body, if you're, if you're looking like that, and like, if you start feeling that and you've seen those changes, that's your body just saying, hey, I'm really not feeling very well. Like this is too much for me. This is too much for my you know, body to process. Um, and on that note, randomly and weirdly, there's actually, um, there's actually a, a, a poop scale out there, um, which <laughs> talks about what healthy poop should look like. And if it's not healthy, we don't talk about it, right? Cause it's just gross. Where would you talk about that? But um, it's actually really, really interesting. And that was one of the first things I looked at when I started feeling you know, rough with the celiacs was why does this, why is this happening? Why is this changing my body? So just like the, the bloating and the acne and you know, things that we talked about earlier, listen to your body, look at what's, coming out of your body and and start thinking maybe that's not as it should be but maybe that's for you has been like that all the time so you don't think of anything different about it you know but you know it, it's it's definitely um an odd topic but it's just your body's just talking to you so just listen so I don't have too too much more and if anybody wanted any questions, I probably rambled a little bit through the beginning of that. So I can also reiterate anything that was spoken about if I was talking too fast. I have a question. Can you talk a little bit about how, um, you know, you said not to, like if it scares you or, or like, you're like, oh, I don't know if I can make this, like to just try it anyway. How much of an impact it is like, you know, how we were conditioned, right? How we were raised how can we kind of maybe overcome some hurdles of like, you know, well, I've never eaten, I've never, we didn't eat Brussels sprouts when I was a kid or like, we didn't eat this or we didn't cook with spices like 
you know, if we're making Indian or, or, you know, more spicy Mexican style foods or curries, or um, can you talk a little bit about of like how to maybe overcome some of those habits, like right, wrong, and different, right? Like it's just how we were raised, but now yeah. we're at a point where we can take, you know, some educated steps or guesses and make stuff. So I think, I think what's really kind of cool about the world is that it got so much smaller, right? With all the travel and you know, how connected we all are. There's so much information out there through Food Network or online on Google, or even, you know, just go to the store and pick up a copy of Bon Appetit magazine. There's so much information out there about food. And I think I'm really, really lucky because I grew up in a house where my mum kind of put me next to her while she cooked. And I would sit next to her and she would tell me what she was doing and that kind of thing. And because I am British, I've grown up with this multicultural Indian food is actually our, our national dish. It used to be fish and chips, but now it's chicken tikka masala. <laughs> so I've grown up with all those different flavors, like, you know, just around me. I think, I think it's difficult for people. Probably the biggest one is spices are expensive and people don't necessarily know what to do with them. So I always say to people, start with just a few. And there's a lots of different profiles that they can go into. So cumin is a great one. Cumin um, is one of my staples in my house. My husband's Hispanic. We have a lot of like Mexican flavors going on. I use it in Hispanic foods. I use it in curry. Um, what else do I use it in? I'll spice up soups and that kind of thing. If I want a little bit of like a, just a different flavor in it. Chili would be another one that goes over to many different, you can make a chili, you can use it in Mexican food. There's just so many different ways you can use it. Paprika is another one, um, as well as cayenne pepper. So start with a small group of spices and, and grow your spice cabinet from there. Um, don't go and buy, unless you really, really want to, don't go and buy organic spices. Um, they're very, very expensive. And honestly, there's not, yes, it was raised differently, I eat organic when I'm eating items like um, an apple um, or strawberry, something like that. But if it's something like a, an orange or a banana where I can peel the skin away, I'm not really too sure what the benefit for me financially is, you know, eating organic. So with organic spices, it's kind of the same thing. They're very, very expensive. Um, yes, you do get what you pay for. But I think if you're just starting out, it's fine just to go and get your McCormick's little spice set. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is thinking like, oh, I don't like curry. There's so many different variations of curry. There's Indian curry, there's Thai curry, um, there's Sri Lankan curry. Like there's just so many different flavor profiles. So to say, I don't like curry. Do you, do you actually know, you know, have you tried it? Maybe mum didn't like curry. I think our parents are a big influencer on what we do and don't eat. I have a girlfriend who um, is actually a triathlete and she's, she always says that she, died of boredom and now she's so into food but she died of boredom growing up because her mother made the same five dishes every week for dinner every week like and it was it was just nothing else well now we don't we, we're, we're lucky we have the internet we can look we can you know kind of get interested so i would pick i would pick a dish and i would try it that would be my first step um things like a thai curry little jars of thai curry paste and coconut milk it's all you need for it and all in it's going to be about four bucks for those two items you know one of the things i like to do is i like to kind of educate my children on food so um quite often we'll do different variations of food from around the world and everything kind of has that same variation um you've got paella you know which is really really simple similar to jambalaya you know like there's all these different sort of like crossovers of food and dishes every every country has a variation on a theme uh, we just made pancakes for Pancake Day in my house mm -hmm. on Tuesday, which is Shrove Tuesday for us. Mm -hmm. um, but the pancake in England is more like a crepe, you know? So there's all these different sort of ways that you can cross-utilize those same ingredients. So pick a country, pick a dish, and just try it. The other thing as well is that um, your flavor profile in your mouth changes every six months or so. So to say that you don't enjoy something may have been true six months ago, but you could have completely different experience now. I think the biggest thing though, is you have to be a little bit interested in food. So you have to want to try those things, you know? I don't cook with recipes because I just, 
throw everything in. But I think for a lot of people, that's really daunting. And you should probably start with a recipe until you kind of get your mindset of like, OK, well, this is cumin. This, this can go into you know, this and this, this does work well in that flavor. Um, also, spices, there's a lot of health benefits with them as well. So they can be really good for your metabolism. Um, they can be really good for cleansing your body. Turmeric is a great one. I use turmeric in a lot of things. Just even in my chicken noodle soup, I'll um, sprinkle some turmeric in it. It's great for um, arthritis, anti-inflammatory. So just crosses over on so many different levels and it's just easy. You just throw it in, it's there. Awesome, so I think we have a couple questions in the chat, but since this is a more intimate group, I thought like now that we um, can like open things up for conversation. So if we can, it'd be cool to like quickly go around and um, quickly introduce yourself, like just your first and last name, um, and then maybe uh, where you work in your favorite food or your food fear. So like your favorite thing that you love or like the fear of like, I just can't do anchovies, like, I don't know. And so um, I'll go first. Um, you guys already met me. I'm Melina Caruso, um, work with ProMedica Paramount. And right now, I think my favorite food, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do, my favorite food right now is I, I've just made um, a couple, I made a mushroom stroganoff that was really good. That was plant-based. So I'm really liking more of like the cozy foods right now. I made a creamy sun-dried tomato pasta as well. So um, those are my things. I think my food fear would be, I want to get into making more and bread because it's really not that hard. And there's this recipe that's like, you literally bake this bread, like you let it rise. It's like the New York street deli bread or something. I'll have to send you guys the link, but it's like four ingredients. You put it in this thing. You actually like bake it in this cast iron thing. I'll send it to you, but yeah, I kind of want to start making more breads. So right. let's go. Um, Riley, you want to go real quick? Hi everyone. Um, as I introduced myself earlier, I'm Riley Steinbeck. I work for the Toledo Chamber with Epic Toledo. Um, my favorite food is potatoes in all forms. I like them all. And then my food fear. I don't know if it's a fear. I think it weirds me out that cauliflower can be made into like a million different things. And I like cauliflower, but like, I don't, I, it just is weirds me out that you can make it into a lot of many things. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Dana, go ahead. I'm just going like across my screen. That works. Hi, I'm Dana Lumbreezer. I work for Gilmore Jason Mahler, an accounting firm in the area. Um, I would probably say my favorite food, I love queso, like Achilles heel. It's so bad. Um, but I think my food fear is I suck at cooking. So <laughs> like not even like I've done like crock pots, like maybe meals have gotten better, but I've been like banned from cooking certain things in my house because my husband's like, you messed this up so badly. You need to stop. So like we tried some of the like hello fresh and whatnot. And I mean, it worked, but it just, I don't know. I feel like I, I try and I still, it takes something that the hello fresh said would only take 20 minutes or a half hour turned into like a two hour process for me. It just is miserable. So I'm, I've been trying to like in the last year, I think I've gotten maybe a little bit better, but the, I need a short sweet to the point. Like I do the meal prep on Sundays, but I still feel like, oh God, this is so undermining. So then we just order food or throw on a frozen pizza because I just can't like. What, what is it you what is it that scares you or what is it that um what's I, I don't know if it's like the I'm type one perfectionist like I don't know if it's that I need things to be perfect so like following a recipe or I think my brain tries to do too many things at once and there's it's do this and then do that and I just need to focus on one thing but I just I, I really try to do it and it just is like, oh, I've got this main thing, but then I've got this other thing and maybe doing too many things at once. 
I, I don't know because I do I multitask on other things but when it comes to the kitchen I just have major issues I find that a lot of people's issue with like um the food prep is like the, the chopping like the, the the amount of time it takes to cut and actually I'll send this to Melina there's um something that we use we train here in Toledo hospital the cooks um it's called culinary foundations and uh, we have the first module that we do is knife skills. And it really, this kind of like, it really just lays it out for you. Like that, that for me has always been the biggest thing is like the amount of time it takes. I also, I hate recipes <laughs> with a passion, but I find that I don't read them completely. So I'm lazy. So I'll skip over like a really key step <laughs> and you know, forget about it. And I'm like, oh, I really realized too late and you know, for me anyway. Yeah, I feel like I've got similar to that, but I don't have the, I can't throw anything together because I wouldn't put something together correctly. So it would just be a nightmare. So <laughs> getting better, but all sorts of hot mess when it comes to kitchen. We'll definitely share more resources for sure. <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll, we'll this will be fun. Um, maybe we do like a recipe share or something with members. I don't know. Anyway, um, so uh, Rachel, go ahead. Try to find the mute button. Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel Brinkman. I actually work with Paramount Healthcare. So I'm in the Paramount ProMedica family. And um, so I do a lot of cooking. I cook a lot from scratch. My parents growing up, we just did everything from scratch because it was so much cheaper. I'm one of seven kids. So feeding seven kids is, you know, a lot. So we didn't really go out to eat at all. So I do a lot of cooking at home. Um, what my favorite is anything pasta. Um, I make a great linguine, although I use canned tomatoes, which I'm going to stop. <laughs> I wrote that down. So I'm using canned tomatoes. Um, and the most recent, uh, is my favorite was the feta pasta. I don't know if you guys are on the Instagram or the challenge. So the feta pasta was pretty good. Um, my biggest fear is canning. Like I just, the sad part is I have a lot of vegetables and most of the time they just go bad just because I don't really know how to do anything with them. So I'll buy, you know, peppers or tomatoes and then they just go bad because I haven't used them. So biggest fear. I love canning. Yeah, so that's one thing that I want to challenge myself to start working on. Good. Maybe Jeff can send us canning information. Yeah, I used to be really, really scared about canning. And I just one day I just like, you know what, I'm just gonna try it, see what happens. Hopefully I don't give anyone botulism, <laughs> which today I haven't. So um <laughs> yeah, I love it. I I just I don't know, there's something really, really cool about like growing something or even just processing something yourself and then being able to sustain that, you know, during the winter. It's, and it's cheap. Awesome. awesome. So Crystal. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Crystal Glambin. I work at the University of Toledo at the Minority Business Assistance Center. Um, my favorite food is probably Indian food. Um, I love all of it, any of it. Um, and my fear, I guess, I am really bad about eating seafood. Um, when I lived in New Jersey, I was much better at it because everything was fresh. But since I've moved back to the Midwest, I'm like, oh, I just can't do this. So I think I need to work on that a little bit. Any tips? On eating seafood? I don't know. I, I'm kind of with you. Like, perch, you. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I love, I prefer, like, I prefer crustaceans, so like shrimp, scallops, that kind of thing. I'm also, I lived in Alaska for seven years, so I have broken down so many halibuts. So I'm really funny about what type of fish I eat. Um, I would eat anything from the bottom of the ocean, and I won't tell you why. Um, I eat fast fish, so just fast moving fish. That's the only thing I'll, I'll really eat. Tuna, mahi mahi, uh, salmon, but it has to be raised correctly because I'm a snob. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. The fat, fast moving fish and crustaceans. Okay, yeah. I'm, gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that in mind. Interesting. We won't worry about those bottom feeders like flounder. <laughs> Wait for those. I muted myself. Kathy, go ahead. Hi, I'm Kathy Harris. I work at Finley Division of USI. 
Um, my favorite food is either cheese or I'm really into sushi lately. So probably those two things. Um, I have two food fears to share. One is cooking meat. I always am afraid I'm going to undercook it. So then I overcook it and it's dry. Um, and then secondly, I'm afraid I'm going to ruin an entire meal by like, if I don't have a recipe and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to maybe add this spice and then I ruin it because it didn't really go with it. And I have a really picky son. So I'm, I try to like, you know, we have like five things we eat and I'm like, I'm going to change it up and add this to make it different and it'll ruin it. So then he won't eat it. <laughs> okay. Tips on meat and making variations of dishes. Um, so do you have a thermometer? Do I have a what? A thermometer. Yes. Meat thermometer? So Dave wants a different, right? So my rule of thumb, like chicken is the only one I don't mess with 165. That's the perfect temperature for chicken. Um, if you take your chicken breast out of the oven and it's like 162, it's probably going to continue cooking and rise up to that. But you want to make sure you're hitting that 165 mark. Um, meat in terms of like steaks, beef, that kind of thing, it's it's the preference. So I like mine more of a medium rare um, and not everybody does. So I think that's something that you have to kind of play with. The other thing I find about keeping the juice inside the meat is it's really, really important to sear meat on every angle that it's exposed to heat and what you're doing then is you're keeping everything inside of it and it's just cooking in its own juices versus kind of just baking you know looking like <laughs> shriveled whatnot but um that would be my tips on meat cooking and then I would say in terms of spices I it's I know it's a real struggle and it, it's it's for a lot of people knowing what goes with what. So I would probably start looking at spice pairing on the internet and kind of getting a feel of like, what are those, those flavors, what kind of crosses over? Um, I don't think you can go really too wrong with spices other than adding like way, way too much. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would definitely have a little look on the internet and just kind of go with pairings on spices and that should help a little bit. But it is, it's, it's for somebody who doesn't know a lot about food, it's really, really daunting. And as I say, then you go into the store and you're like looking at a line of spices and you're just like, oh, but um, Indian cuisine, cumin, curry, turmeric, um, Mexican cuisine, chili, uh, cumin, cayenne, paprika, Asian cuisine, um, ginger, it's a huge flavor, sesame is another one. And um, all of those, all of those need minced garlic in all of the food. So it goes a long way. Thank you. Awesome. Um, Sydney, you're up. Hi, I'm Sydney Smith. I work at Thermetry Doors. Um, my favorite food is pizza, hands down. <laughs> I probably could try and make it at home though. So I will ch ch challenge myself to do that. Um, my food fear is that, so similar to somebody else's comments in the chats was I live alone. So if I make something, I usually, uh, have to eat it for a lot of time. So it's how do I portion what I'm just going to eat for myself? I love that you brought that up. Um, that's the biggest thing I get asked is if you're, if you're on your own or if it's two of you, how do you do that? Um, my girlfriend is, it's just her and her husband. They eat out every single night because they're like, oh, that's, uh, you know, but they're really struggling with that because of eating fast food not even just fast food, just food in general that's prepared in a restaurant tends to be higher in calories. So I'm gonna go back to my chicken. You got the chicken, you've got, <coughs> excuse me, the base for so many different foods there. So if you're gonna prep up on a Sunday, you've got chicken noodle soup. As I said earlier, you can make a chicken curry out of it. Um, chicken salad, I do a, a chicken walnut and grape salad. So then I can do that with, you know, on a salad that I just prepare with me. And I guess, I guess the thing is, is like you might be, you don't have to make a chicken casserole and have to eat that casserole for the entire week. You know, you could take that concept and put it to a flank and cook a flank. And then you could do the same thing, portion it up, have it on a salad, put it into another dish. Like there's just so many variations for it. So I, as I said, I prep everything on a Sunday. 
and then I use all of those ingredients. Another one I do, um, butternut squash. I love butternut squash. And I'm always trying to find ways of getting uh, vegetables into my kiddos. So I'll take a butternut squash, I'll roast it and put it into a pasta. Um, I might then cook it down and make it into like a, a pasta sauce. Um, you can put it into, like I said earlier, curry, like it just crosses over and you buy, when you buy product or produce, it goes bad so quickly when you're single that you're spending a lot of money, right? Because it takes a lot of money to buy healthy foods, but then you're not being able to go through it all. So cross utilization of those products and everything you eat, it might be a week of Brussels and you know, butternut, but hey, I mean, so what? Um, but yeah, so the basic principle is like, don't make the dish itself for you to last for you for the entire week, make the protein or whatever you want and then use that into different forms. Thank you. Yeah, Welcome. that's awesome. I know there was a couple other comments like Erin might touch on that too when, when she's up. Um, yeah, so Julia, we'll go for it. Oh, are you unmuted or muted still? Oh. <laughs> Headphones. Can you hear me now? Yes, cool. Okay, I forgot my microphone doesn't work without my headphones for some reason. Um, my name is Julia Bragg and I work at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, I think my favorite food is also potatoes in any form. Um, yeah, I could eat those every day. Um, I think my food fear is just like cooking new things. Um, I recently like moved out of my parents' house and I'm living on my own now. So I have to start cooking for myself. And I think it's just, I only know how to cook like a few certain meals. So I keep making the same things again and again. So just like trying to find new recipes and new things. And I do think the if I start food prepping more that will definitely help me. But I think that's what I struggle with the most. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about you, Chef, but like what I started doing is, I don't know, it, and it totally depends on on your bubble and how you're doing with, you know, COVID and, and making sure you're staying safe and everything. But mm -hmm. I meal prep with some friends, like one, like I'll go to my friend <laughs> Mary's house and we'll make like three things and we'll make it together. And so like, I don't know, I found like the buddy system is kind of fun or I live in a building too. So it's like, I made chili and I'm like, Hey, I love some chili on your doorstep. And like, we just start like this passing back and forth things we make. So do you have any like comments on how, you know, maybe doing something like that can make food prep less daunting? I think that's a really good idea. I never even thought about yeah. that. Food prep party. <laughs> that's what do. Sounds great. Maybe there's a glass of, yeah, there's all yeah. like the chef always needs a glass of wine. I'm Italian. So that's how like we were raised. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Natalie, go ahead. Hi, I'm Natalie. I work at Rudolph Libby. Um, my dad is from the Middle East, so my favorite is just like anything Persian. Um, there's a couple of dishes that like they take so much longer, but they're so worth it. Um, and a lot of the spices um, you have a hard time finding around here, so like they're really special when I actually get to enjoy them. Um, as far as food fears, I don't really, I don't think there's anything I'm really afraid of as far as like eating um, besides the fact that I, I've discovered I have a, a ton of food insensitive insensitivities. Um, so it's like gluten, milk, eggs, almonds, like a lot of the big things that's happened to me and everything. So um, my food journey has kind of forced me to be healthier um, so it's kind of maybe be more creative in the kitchen and stuff. So I just, sometimes it's just frustrating because I, you know, have it's kind of limited on what I can eat sometimes. That's really tough. I love Middle Eastern food. It's one of my favorites. And it's normally really actually pretty good for you, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of just nice natural flavors, not overly processed. Um, so with you, like, your milk do you have a milk allergy or is it like you're just insensitive to it like I'm super sensitive to it so I found when I got diagnosed with my celiacs I think I was more upset about the dairy uh, than I was about the celiac um yeah. normally if you've got an, a gluten issue your tummy is pretty torn up 
And that's what makes the milk an issue because it's harder for your body to break down the lactose. So do you, do you live a gluten-free diet? I would say 90% of the time. Yeah. The time. So I was, I actually switched to like everything almonds and then I realized I was still had inflammation issues. And then I realized it was actually almonds as well. So then I had to switch off of almonds to, you know, like I do like flax milk from shakes and stuff. So you tried goat's milk. I have not. It's interesting flavor. It's not bad. Um, but that's normally one that the people are pretty good at. So <laughs> Yeah, normally, normally it's it's a it's an issue because of the the gluten that causes your dairy. So to go completely gluten free is probably going to be the best way for you. Um, mm. You should probably get tested though if you haven't been tested. And the only way to get tested is to continue eating gluten. They need that protein in your diet to be able to test you. Uh, so yeah, that sucks. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm the same way. Like I I would love a really good burger bun every now and again or a piece of pizza, but I can't. So yeah difficult i know it is um let's go really quick um christy hi i'm christy fair i work for rudolph libby um i would say my favorite foods are breakfast food like a good eggs benedict i just i love breakfast um my fear would probably be just not building healthy food habits for my kids. Like both my husband and I come from families where like fast food, not making things from scratch, all that kind of, like that was just the norm. And so like we as, you know, our family has tried to fight against those habits. And so we do do a lot of cooking in our house, but it's still like you were saying earlier, like when you have to go to gymnastics or whatever, you know, I have three kids, so we're really busy. Um, and so just um, really working towards building those healthy food habits, but then also figuring out how to do it, or sometimes you do have to run and grab something or, you know, finding that balance. But I do think about that a lot. <laughs> I um so I'm not going to tell you that I, my kids have never eaten McDonald's or they don't eat McDonald's because they do. Yeah. <laughs> but I try and limit it. How much are your, how old are your children? I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old and a 10-month-old. Oh, girl. So. <laughs> so I've been there. I had three under five. Yeah. Really, really rough. But I think the biggest thing probably as you get the children get older, start with that five-year-old is, is starting to get them interested in it. And that should help adjust their, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it, it does. Like our parents are such a massive influence on us. So if we, if they see you doing it, they're going to do it because that's the only way because mommy does it. Yeah. Yeah, so we do try to involve our five-year-old. Yeah, I have children here as we speak. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we do try to involve our five-year-old in cooking and stuff, which has been fun. It's difficult, right? Because it's like my daughter always comes in. She'll come in like, I help. You know, Argh, you know. <laughs> awesome. Well, Alex and then Aaron. So um, I'll go very quickly because my question was answered and I already put it in Amazon order, but um, my name is Alex <laughs> and I work for the Ladies Professional Golf Association. Um, my favorite food is 1 million percent salmon in any form. I love smoked salmon. That berries bagel is my kryptonite. I love that. And salmon is something I can cook and I do quite often but my food fear is definitely cooking chicken. And I end up making it so gross looking after, which who doesn't want to take an Instagram photo of what they've made. So I like cut into it and try to see if it's pink, but the food thermometer is a great tip. And I should have thought of that and have done that a while ago. So I'll definitely be doing that. Did you say 175? 165. Always 165 Perfect. and chicken. Perfect. Is that no matter which way you're cooking it? So if you're baking it or roasting it or 65, okay. Or like, um, like on a skillet, it always, no matter what, how you're cooking it, it needs to be, okay. Absolutely has to be 165. Just, you know, no more wants a foodborne illness for dinner. So <laughs> and that's the only one I'm really, really funny about, honestly. Like even duck, I'll do medium rare, but um, yeah, I eat chicken and turkey for sure. 
I'll save this for a different episode. Episode. I'll save this for a different meeting. But oh yeah, there was a year when Grandma undercooked the turkey, and <laughs> some people got sick. Yeah. So, and I never ate turkey because I was always like skeptical. But anyway, um, Aaron, go ahead. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, my name's Aaron Curley. I'm the owner of Engage Studio Architects. Um, pretty much a one woman show, so I stay busy that way. Um, so my favorite foods are everything I probably shouldn't eat, which is basically red meat, pasta, and cheese. Um, and uh, yeah, I love to eat all three together, which is even worse, right? But, you know, it is what it is. Um, my fears, I mean, I talked a little bit about some of them, and just as you being just a single person, um, it's, it's really hard to food prep, but I add that with being extremely picky. Um, and then just, you know, not, never feeling like they have time. Um, so, you know, doing everything for the business and just, I never feel like I have time meal prepping. I've tried it. Like I lose patience. Um, same thing as some of the others, you know, just having issues with, um, just feeling like I'm always messing it up or, you know, wasting money because I, I messed up a, a meal and I was like, Oh, money down the drain. So I think we're all kind of in the same boat, especially those of us, it sounds like those of us who are kind of cooking for one, kind of all the same issues, so. Yeah. I think that's the one we always hear is that cooking for one is so difficult. I think you have to realize that you have to come first, otherwise nothing else is gonna work if you're not looking after you. Easy to say, right, as a woman? It's very easy to say. I've been working on it all year long. <laughs> So actually COVID has been really good for me from that standpoint, except for the cooking thing. I, I haven't quite mastered the, the, the eating habit change, but I've been able to master everything else. So good for you. Well, challenge yourself one new thing a week. Yeah. Everything, try everything once. And if you don't like it, you never have to try it again. Right. Yeah, so to avoid that, Melina, I got a new puppy yesterday. So now that's my focus, right? So instead of cooking new food, I got a new puppy. So that's, you know, Meal prep for both of you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you should cook for your dog. Honestly. Yeah. Good. yeah. Um, Christian, go ahead. Round us out. Yeah. All right. Uh, Christian Piazza. I work at Wilcox Financial here in Toledo. My favorite food is literally anything under the sun. I love <laughs> food. It's probably my biggest passion other than my wife. And so with that, I don't really have many food fears, but a question for you, Hannah, um, what are your thoughts on like a cleanse? Like I always hear like a juice cleanse or like a liquid diet to kind of get a reset or restart to your body. What are your thoughts on that? I think they're a great idea if you can do them. I don't have the willpower to do it. Um, I have known a few people who have done them. One of the ones which always resonated with me was um, actually my ex-husband, an olive oil and lemon cleanse. Have you heard of that one? No. <laughs> so Sounds good cleanse. though. I love both of those. It's called the Meyer lemon cleanse. Meyer lemons are a different kind of lemon. Um, let me look it up. They're really good for you. Mm -hmm. So this olive oil and lemon cleanse, like it sounded pretty rough, but... Um, it was really crazy. I was asking him about it, how it went. And he said that he felt like he had Skittles running down in his tummy into his bowels for like two days. It was tiny little stones and it came out in this cleanse. And everyone who's done this cleanse has said the same thing, like these tiny miniature and that you can actually feel it running in. I don't know, I think they're a good idea. I think anything that can just kind of give your body time to just reset is a good idea. My big thing about like nutritional health is probiotics. I take a 50 billion, I think it is probiotics, the strongest one I can find. And if I don't take it, I feel it. Like it's, it's crazy what a difference that makes. That's really helped me stabilize my tummy. And the lady earlier um, was talking about Persian food. I think that might be something that a really, really good probiotic would help. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, I kind of, I've never done one, but I kind of want to try it <laughs> just to say. It it. On a I've heard you get quite fluey as well. So, you know, going to feel a bit crappy, but then afterwards you'll feel great. Yeah. Right. 
Well, I want to make sure we're staying pretty like cognizant of time and thank you everybody for contributing and talking and sharing. We'll follow this up with a couple other resources. I know um, Chef talked about knife skills. Um, we can throw in a couple of other things that we talked about, um, maybe regarding like canning or cleanses or, or thermometers, meat thermometers. Um, but yeah, th thank you guys so much for, for joining. Thank you, Chef, so much. Um, we're really excited to do this. And if this is an interesting topic still, we can always, you know, look at this later on down the road too. So um, thank you guys very, very, very much. If you have any other questions, feel free to like email Riley or myself or reach out on LinkedIn and um, we'll try to get you answers. So thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hannah and everyone for putting everything together and for taking time. Great, great event. Thank you.